Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuked, and this is the second part of the tutorial aimed at creating a music video with automatic lip sync using AI. Last time we saw how to create her singing voice with RBC. Today, instead, we are going to learn how to create the basic video to which we will apply lip sync in the next and final part of this series. The video of our subject will be completely generated with animated F, so there will be no need to apply any video to video effects. Additionally, I will explain a new node called Batch Prompt Schedule that you can download from the manager or install manually in the custom notes folder, following the instructions on the repository. In this specific case, we could even do without this node but I decided to experiment to see what happens. Like last time, let's start with a pre-made workflow that I will explain. We begin with the basic structure where we have the usual load checkpoint connected to Animate Diff Loader Evolved, a node I explained a little while ago in another tutorial that I'll link in the description. In this case, I opted for this model and left the parameters of uniform context options unchanged. On the other side, we have a clip set last layer with the value recommended by the model's creator to which we connect the new node that I will explain today. Uh, its name, as mentioned before, is Batch prompt schedule, and it allows us to change the prompt automatically, in this case, during the generation of the video. I'm showing you some much more impressive examples than what we'll see with this video, because in this specific workflow, I just wanted to experiment to see if it was possible to create something in rhythm with music, as we'll see later. The fields of this node are as follows. The initial text field where we will enter our scheduled prompt, which is the piece of prompt we want to vary over time, based on the frame the generation has reached. The first number is the frame from which we want that prompt to be applied, while the second field is the prompt itself. Then we have max frames, indicating the maximum number of frames for which this prompt will be created. Print output, which if enabled, shows the output of the various prompts created in the console. The pretext field where we put the prompt that will be positioned before our scheduled prompt. Uh, the app text field where we put the prompt that will be positioned after the scheduled prompt. Start frame, which identifies from which frame to start creating the prompt. Usually left at zero, but might be useful for testing. Finally, we have the four PW fields, which are variables for prompt weight. For example, if in my first prompt, I rate this. When we run our workflow, PWA and the prompt will take the value we give to the field below. This is usually used to adjust the intensity on the final result of certain words. Be careful to use backticks to contain these variables. Uh, furthermore, in the scheduled prompt, it's possible to insert advanced expressions created with Namexper, but for that I refer you to the documentation that I'll leave in the description. And the last thing I'll tell you not yet written in the README of the official repository is that it's possible to add negative prompts using neg as a separator. In this way, everything that comes after this string will be considered a negative prompt. Well, having said that, continuing the tutorial from last time, I wanted the video to somehow sync with the music. I used this site to extract basic keyframes from the audio we generated in the previous video. Practically, the value after the frame number is the volume value extracted based on a formula. I use Visual Studio Code to format the prompt correctly using regular expressions to extract only the frames with a volume higher than a certain threshold. And for each frame, I put a prompt in the hope that it would vary the generation of falling snow, perhaps generating some nice effects. Well, 
Let's say that, in my case, it practically had no effect at all. After this, let's say we're practically done, as all that's left is to pass a number of empty latents as we like to the K-sampler. I selected 600 with a resolution of 728 by 512. and pass the output to the DAE decoder and in turn to the save video node, uh, enabling the save video option. Through set metadata for save video, we'll set the FPS to eight and the number of frames equal to the number of empty latents passed to this sampler. Well, finally, we can launch the video generation. Of course, the generation time will depend on the, the resolution GPU power and the number of empty latents chosen, so don't exaggerate if you don't have a powerful GPU or immense patience. Great, now all that's left is to apply lip sync and upscale the images, improving the details, but I'll explain that in the third and final part of this tutorial series. And with that, it's all for today. I wish you a happy and prosperous year, and I hope as always that this video has been helpful to you. In the meantime, you can find this workflow in the links in the description. Please consider liking and subscribing if you found this tutorial useful. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. And until next time, keep dreaming. <laughs>